My name is Bella Vasquez, and I'm a bilingual social worker working with Open Doors the most vulnerable and average families. It is said that if you save one life, it does this you save the entire world. And that's our mission here at Open Door. Each child, each family, each world. I met Donnie's right after she found out she was pregnant. And as a routine part of our prenatal program, I evaluated her for anxiety and depression. She was a 26-year-old with a self-deprecating manner and a shy demeanor. This pregnancy, as you can imagine, was a sweet little surprise. She and her partner, Christian, were very excited about the pregnancy. But even so, Daddy was very anxious about becoming a mom. She worried about money, about how she was gonna find the money to pay for all of her bills as well as what baby would need at this time. But don't you worry, her partner stepped up to the plate and he worked extra shifts, but that also meant that Daddy's was left alone with her thoughts. Being so far away from her own mother was just devastating for her. Daddy's told me if my mom lived close by, she would help me so much. Daddy's had trouble sleeping, Staying asleep it was so difficult for her, and she also found herself to have a difficult time concentrating on the littlest tasks at home. And that anxiety was just overwhelming for her. At our first session, I said, Daddy, que bueno que me contaste. No estás sola, estamos aquí para ayudarte. You are not alone. We are here to help you. You have a team. You have doctors, midwives, patient advocates, nurses, and most importantly, you have me. My door is always open, my phone is always on, and I'm always gonna be here for you. For many of my patients, especially those whose families that live far away, pregnancy can be a very fragile time. I have to say though, for Daddy's, the biggest challenge for her was asking for help. She didn't wanna be a burden. And that is why she enrolled into Open Doors prenatal support groups and then our baby box program, and then our nurturing parenting classes, and eventually our postpartum classes. But still, week after week, as the birth of her new baby came closer, we addressed the anxiety that was still consuming her. We worked on financial strategies, and we developed coping mechanisms to address her isolation. And with my help, she was able to make two new friends at one of her prenatal support groups. So the big day came. <laughs> I want you to meet Gretel, a beautiful baby girl. I was with Daddy and Gretel at every medical visit with her open door pediatrician, Dr. Swiderski. Early on, we saw that the baby wasn't reacting the way that she should in terms of physical movement, making eye contact, and responding to cues. You know, I would, think my, I would snap my fingers like this, and she wouldn't even blink. She didn't cry the entire visit. She was totally silent. So Dr. Sardersky examined her thoroughly and made the determination that she needed to be evaluated by an ophthalmologist as well as a neurologist. For cases like this, there can be no waiting. So our patient advocate, Angel, arranged the appointments for the baby to be seen immediately. The neurologist diagnosed Gretel with a condition called hypotonia otherwise known as the floppy infant syndrome. She had low muscle tones in her arms, back, legs, and neck. The hypotonia causes neurological problems and delays, such as the baby not being able to hold her head up, no grabbing, no crawling, no talking, and eventually, no walking. No matter who you are, when you find out your child has a diagnosis like this, your life turns upside down. Now imagine that you don't have the resources, that English is not your first language, that you don't have a car, that your family does not live nearby, and you don't know how to navigate this healthcare system. Just imagine yourself in that situation. Thaddeus was absolutely heartbroken. She said she had felt as if she had done something wrong, as if this were her fault. I don't think anyone with a child who gets sick doesn't wonder if they could have done something to prevent it. So it was imperative that I keep her focused and motivated because Gretel needed a mom who was up to the task. 
So our first priority was Brenda's weight gain. So I took her tour with the department, which is our Women, Infants, and Children's Nutrition Program. Our nutritionists worked really hard with daddies to come up with a daily program to increase Brenda's diet. Each ounce she gained in her life was critical. As you can imagine, daddies and her baby were thrown into a series of tests that were with diagnosis that were really hard to understand and potential consequences that were scary and even harder to process. So, Dr. Swiderski and I spoke with her before every appointment that she had and after each appointment to explain in plain language what just did happen in that appointment. You know, we could have looked at Gretel and Daddies and seen a disabled baby and mom, but instead we looked at them and saw a beautiful child and a loving mother with a lifetime of possibilities. We were absolutely relentless in making sure that this baby got early intervention services with daily phone calls and endless petitioning to get her physical therapy, speech therapy, and occupational therapy. And finally, after months of ongoing advocacy, we worked with the physiatrist to get Gretel braces from her knees down to stabilize her legs. Gretel is now two years old. And with the help of our care team here at Open Door, her mom, her dad, and a dedicated group of specialists, she now has the muscle tone to take a few steps, smile, she can hold hands, and she can even say a few words, like mama and dada. There are no words. Fortunately, most cases are not anywhere as severe as Gretel's. But Daddy's is one of 57,000 patients that open door seat each year. And most of our patients are working poor families with children to take care of and just need a little extra support to get healthy, stay healthy, and lead productive lives. <laughs> All of my patients are my opportunity to make our world a much better place. Each child, each family, one by one, we contribute to the health of our overall community, one world. So I thank you. I thank you for being here. I thank you for caring. Because your support is a vital resource that allows me and my colleagues to do the work that we do. For people who don't have a lot of resources, Open Door is truly a lifeline. So thank you for supporting this life-enhancing and life-saving work.